the goal of this tier list is to place people where they should be for your rank games. Understand this is an SPL. This isn't your casual. This isn't assault. This isn't arena. This is ranked. I've played from 1500 MMR to masters four times so far, like two times on this patch. I think I have an idea, a grasp of what's, you know, what's there, what's happening and what's going to happen because we have a patch hitting uh, probably the day that this goes up on YouTube, but the, you know, tomorrow for us right now. I'm not going to go into insane detail when I go on these. I will do that on YouTube in another video. I will do each tier and go into very good detail, but I will talk a little bit if it's basic stuff that you should know if you've been playing the game i'm not gonna go into detail like first god achilles achilles is a solid god doesn't need a lot of talk about it we know what his kit does we know how he does in laning phase we know he has a very good late game a plus agni i still think agni is one of the best ranked mid lane gods in the game because of his ability to do damage over walls out of sight out of mind it's very very much a thing in smite and ranked so that damage is free why he's so good amc poo poo uh, dies too fast, doesn't do well with a crit build, ability hunters aren't in, simple. Uh, Puash, uh, Puash has been bouncing around for me, but he's not being played a lot. He's not having hyper success. He's kind of getting punished a lot now that warriors are a little bit better. And then with the nerfs coming to mage items tomorrow, I think he gets even more nerfed. So I'll leave him A for now. Uh, I almost want to say, oops, I didn't, didn't put the tier in here. Um, I almost want to say he's back to being a counter pick, like, or a team built around him-esque, but I... I still think he'd be played. I don't think he's bad. Ama, lower tier than I would have expected. She's not performing well. A warriors aren't doing anything on her. A little bit lower tier on the ADC list. I'm going to put him in a B tier. Very much average. Not solid. Not insane. Anubis, performing pretty well with the change to his one. But he's not something that does well into the late game. His late game still struggles from anti-heal hard cc and being dope he's not gonna outkill somebody that kills him because of anti-heal even with the changes to anti-heal so while he's early in mid game definitely feel better still an a tier god for me al kuang i'm gonna put him in a plus i don't think he's s tier i do think he's a very very good ranked jungler obvious reasons high magic damage <sighs> afro is getting nerfed in this patch hitting tomorrow or you know the day this video goes up the afro nerfs are relevant i don't think they're game breaking they're removing some of the protections from the one and i think they're changing some other things she's still going to be very good those protections are over the top so if they bring them down to anywhere near balance that makes her really good instead of completely broken apollo very much uh an average pick in the adc role right now arachne seeing some comeback into ranked with crit builds but with crit being nerfed tomorrow i'm not sold on her still being a tier I'm between these two. I think the crit nerfs aren't like, they aren't going to break crit. Crit is still going to be very, very good. So that's why I'm going to leave her in A for now. Uh, Ares, B tier support. Not that he's a bad support, just very average. He's got a lot of bad matchups and you're going to be picking him depending on what's played versus and what's not played versus just picking him because he's good. Baba Yaga performing amazingly right now. You see her played in SPL. Um, you see her played in a lot of ranked games. She's very simple to play. Her range is kind of the key factor in how good she is, plus the fact that she's very difficult to dive when played correctly. You've seen her build Prophetic a lot, which making her tankier too, making her even hard to dive. Um, very good god. Artemis, probably the worst hunter in the game, next to one of the other hunters that we're going to get into. No mobility and the ult being super lackluster. The ult is the one thing that keeps you, you know, keeps Artemis as a potential god to be played, but it's just not good enough. Uh, Ardeo, I don't know if I'd even say Ardeo is average. I think Ardeo is a really bad pick right now. She struggles in all the roles. She doesn't do anything in any role. She's not outperforming anybody. I'd much rather have any warrior than an Ardeo in the soul lane, and she's not a support. Um, that's just where I'm at. I don't think that's going to change. Athena's a solid support all around. Nothing bad about her. Her rotations are great. Atlas, people have been hating on Atlas lately. I still think for ranked, Atlas is nuts. One of the better supports in the game. He's fallen down a little bit because healing has been bumped up so much, but he is still very good. A Wheelix, very, very good pick right now. I wouldn't say a Wheelix is a core pick for a team, but it, she's always good, even without knockups, because there's always leaps. There's always something you can alt as long as you're hitting your three. There's definitely always something you can alt. So Wheelix is a solid pick all the time. Bacchus, I like a lot for ranked. The heavy aggressive support play in ranked is very valuable. Bacchus, probably the best ranked jungler right now. 
outside of one or two other junglers. So I'd say he's like two or three out of all the all the junglers in the game. Maybe four. Crit getting nerfed could change that, but I don't expect it to. Baron, I'd say, is a solid pick. I don't think he's great in any role, and that's his issue. It's like that player that tries to play every role and be pretty good at every role instead of being great at one role. That's how Baron is to me. He's not great at one role. He can kind of play support, kind of play mid, kind of play solo. Definitely not bad at any of those roles, but is he the best? No. So we're going to put him as, in as a very good pick. Bastet, I think, is a very good pick, similar to a Wheelix. You could always just play it because of the high damage. Bologna, to me, underperforming along with the other auto-attack warriors. Kabraken, he fell off crazy from last year for no real reason. He can still one-shot out of the jungle and still be really, really relevant in the game. He's just not over the top, and he's not priorities, a priority pick at all. Kamazots, even after the nerfs, not a good pick to me. Lacking CC. Almost like Bastet, except for I feel like Bastet's damage and kit is more of a burst dump where Kambazot's is consistent damage until the late game, and it's just struggle bust for people playing it in ranked. Cerberus, I'd say, is a little underperforming in, in all roles, especially support and solo, but all roles. Sir, pop it off. Sir has been doing great. Again, they nerf him a little bit, and it doesn't matter. People realize he has triple lifesteal between starters, a lifesteal item, and his one, and he kind of just takes off. For rank specifically, he's even more valuable because you can solo objectives. You can solo gold way earlier than anybody else. You can do every single buff without taking any damage. You can tank the fire giant and do fire giant by yourself if you get a lead. It's kind of crazy, and when you play ranked, if you're playing a carry role and you're not leading your team, you're not a shot caller, you're not VGSing a lot, you're not telling your team what to do, you're not you're not commsing, then playing a god that can do these things by yourself is very valuable. Shot got buffed. Still think he's an average pick because late game he falls off. They did buff him. He is hard to kill until everyone gets full build. Once people are full build, a little bit easier to kill. Chunga! I think Chunga is possibly the best mage in ranked. You insta-kill somebody... Uh, with an alt and a one you half health to like 80 percent health somebody with a one and a three the combo is so instant that you can't do anything about it i honestly believe chunga on top of the healing like the way healing is working right now like yes she got changed she got nerfed a little bit on her healing they buffed her so she does more damage after she hits more abilities but she's just performing like 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 a like a mad person the mage items are getting nerfed if mages get bumped down to where they're not one doing as much damage, she'll fall to S tier. I don't know if the power they removed from Rod, um, Doom Orb, and I think they removed power from Spear of the Magus and Spear of Desso. I don't think that matters too much because there are other options and other items to go. And you're only losing, I mean, we're talking like 40 power being lost. That 40 power isn't the difference between getting one shot or not. It's really not. Charybdis, underperforming. She's really safe as a hunter, but not performing very well. Chernabog, I like a lot because of the global alt. The ability to split push and current smite and still get over to a team fight is just insanely valuable. It doesn't work the same for Apollo because Chernabog is an instant uh, get out of jail freaking card or get into the fight instant, you know, right away uh, card while the Apollo is just, it's not the same. It doesn't play out the same right now. Chiron has fallen off a bit. Ability Chiron not doing so hot. I know they nerfed Crusher. And I think they nerfed Jotuns, right? A little while ago. And I think those had big hits on the Chiron. We're just seeing crit overtake all ability hunters still. Maybe with the nerfs to crit, we see that change. I don't think so. Kronos has fallen off a bit. He's down to B tier, not performing very, very well, along with all the other auto attack hunters. Charybdis. I, or sorry, not Charybdis. Fucking Cleodonna or Cleo. She got nerfed. I think it was damage to her two and maybe her three. Or maybe her three and or was it three and then maybe her two. As soon as that happened, she started getting played way less. That came along with nerfs to some of the bases. So that is most definitely the combo and why she's not S tier SS plus. She's still performing really well. She's still very good in rank. She's hard to kill. A lot of damage, still insta kills. So she's going to stay A plus. Cthulhu, I'd say, is down here as a solo lander in B tier. Would not touch him anywhere else. Kakulin, same boat. I don't think Kakulin is performing like a lot of these other warriors are. Because he can't compete with gods like Guan and Hercules. So why are you playing him? You're not. He becomes a super average pick. Cupid. I've recently been put on the Cupid um, train, I guess. Uh, Cupid's good. I think Cupid's better than people realize. He counters a lot of the gods being played 24-7. So play him. Win. Have fun. I think he's even better in rank than anywhere else. Because his ultimate becomes hyper valuable. 
Dodgy. I don't see a lot of Dodgy in ranked. Dodgy's still very good and counters so many of these gods being picked because they don't have CC immune ults. So play more Dodgy. She's also Naku immune. So gods like Hiba or Baba Yaga, because Baba's ult knocks you back, you can counter that by using your two at the proper time. Danza's performing better right now with the crit build and just the raw ability damage he has built into his kit. Crits on top of that become a lot of damage. Good movement. His ultimate becomes very, very valuable in a lot of the mid and like MP fights too. Discordia, average. She's safe. She's not a great ranked mage, but she's not bad. Erlong Shen, definitely the worst warrior in Smite. Uh, they they gutted him. He's not coming back anytime soon. Eset, I'd say is lower tier. Her ult and her kit just doesn't fit anywhere right now. She's not competing with Nox, with Hell, with Afro and support. So why would you play her anywhere? You wouldn't. Fafnir, average, really good with crit team comp. If you have a Mer Mercury and an ADC, Fafnir, very, very strong. Fenrir, I'd say he's a good pick. He still performs great in the early and mid game for ranked. Late game, he starts to fall off because of damage. But if you snowball or you go a hybrid item or two, you know, Magi, some other defensive item that keeps you alive, then you'll be all right and you'll still be able to do your job plus some. Freya, I'd say, ooh, what the heck? I'd say Freya is underperforming right now. Along with the other auto attack mages, they've just been gutted. Uh, Ganesha, I'd say, is an average support if you're playing him properly. You need to learn the balance of aggression and passiveness to be annoying to the other team, but still not leave your team out to dry. A lot of Ganesh, people who play support and play Ganesh struggle at doing that. Geb, I'd say Geb is an average pick. I don't think Geb is a great pick. I think he's super simple for new players to play. I think he's valuable in most team comps. But he's not going to win you rank games if you're a support player. So that's why I'm going to put him down to the B tier. Gilgamesh, I'd say he's underperforming now even after the buff. Still not one of the better warriors. Guan, I think, is potentially the best warrior to play in ranked. You have an ultimate that is either going to keep you alive or guarantee you kills. You have crazy cooldown, which nobody can keep track of. You've got sustain that nobody else has. And your damage, your raw damage numbers with no damage items is strong. Plus, they put in Sekmets, which makes you even more OP. I think Guan is four ranked, probably the best warrior for you to play uh, consistently. You spam Guan, I think you'll have a good time. King Arthur shits on Guan? Not really. No. Not, not at all. King Arthur is not even one of the better warriors right now. That makes no sense. Bluestone has been nerfed into the ground. Um, King Arthur won't be able to clear and you'll just struggle. Guan, Guan's just gonna chill. Yeah, like KA can't stop Guan's three. KA is not going to clear and cancel Guan's three. And in the event that somehow your three is getting interrupted, you level your two. And your two full clears. You auto the King Arthur once, it groups it up, and you you clear it. Guan can't be canceled on his three. He can't be knocked up during his three. So what's canceling Guan's three? I'm actually interested. Uh, I really uh, usually I wouldn't do this during you know a, a video or uh, something that's gonna go on YouTube, but I'm interested. What cancels Guan's three? From King Arthur, bro. You can't say Hades too. You fucking drunk. This dude said King Arthur shits on Guan. He can cancel Guan's three. How? With what ability? With his ultimates that he doesn't have. Sick, dude. Sick. You realize Guan's three comes back up in the ultimate, right? Nice try. Good attempt, my guy. You're going to ult every single wave? Nice. Nice try. You're getting laughed at because that's how drunk you are. Were you the dude who just said... Wait, no, you weren't the guy who said... You were saying something dumb earlier. Besides the point. Back to the tier list. You're dumb. Hachi, down to B tier. Safe Hunter... Actually, that's a lie. A tier. Very safe hunter. Good into almost any matchups in terms of being able to outplay them. But that's the thing. He's not always just pure free laning. You got to know how to play your matchups to play him. Hades, I'd put an A tier. Solid solo laner when you know Hades. Hebo. I put Hebo in S tier. I still think Hebo should win almost all jungle matchups except for one or two and even in those matchups you can there's a way to play around it to have a good game your damage in the late game which everyone makes it the late game almost every game should be going uh 25 30 35 minutes no matter what as long as you don't have six because you're scared um hebo's gonna get full build and he's gonna shred heimdall very much underperforming right now because of crit build if crit build finally gets killed and auto attack build gets buffed a little bit heimdall's gonna be killing it but we're not there yet hell 
one of the best supports in the game. Uh, if you saw genetics, he's argue people are arguing he's the best player in the game right now, overall, out of all roles, as a support player, which is crazy. He put out a, a tier list and a big website. Um, I'll probably link it below on YouTube video. You guys can find it on Twitter too. I retweeted it. Uh, where he has hell up there at high tier. Hell is just nuts. Hell's two is extremely undervalued by your average player. So if you're a support gamer and you just want to play support, pick up hell and learn how good that two is. It will make you a different hell player than everyone else. Hera, not very good right now. No mobility and her ultimate is just not enough in current smite. Hercules has moved up. They reduced the cooldown on his one and his two. And then they did something else. They gave him attack speed on his three. So they pretty much just buffed him across the board while also buffing warriors a little bit from all the items, you know, crit being nerfed, mage items being nerfed twice back to back on the, the, on the items. So we're seeing Hercules perform way better, 100%. Horus, as a support, S tier. I'd almost put him SS. I do think he's the best aggressive support. If you're a support player, you want to be an aggressive support player in ranked is how you win more games. So you will be playing Horus. I wouldn't say he's broken or you need to top pick him or ban him. I don't, I very rarely see him get banned. Uh, he'll make it through most bans. He is something you can prioritize though, because other people don't. Ho Yi underperforming right now. Not good with the current builds and in the current state of ADCs. On bats. Pretty much the epitome of a solid, good jungler. Not OP, not bad, has good team fights, has good solo kill potential, especially since you can build crit on him. There's a lot there. Ishtar going into S tier, one of the better hunters right now. E Shell. I don't know if E Shell is the best god in the game. She's probably the best god in the game. Yeah, she's probably the best. I, I like she probably when when there's only one E Shell, when you're playing ranked and E Shell gets in the game, you don't want to play against her. She'll be the best god of the game. Now, if you're in casuals, there's two E-shells. It's You can actually deal with it. She's pretty broken. I haven't played her in a while, but when I was playing her, she can one-shot people with no ultimate, which is kind of crazy. And her ultimate's nuts for team fights. Is Anami, I'd put in A tier as a as a, like a good ranked pick because it instantly gives you lane control. Having lane control and ranked is more valuable than anything else uh, as a ranked player because you want to win your lane and have pressure that way you can get wards out you can always avoid ganks because you have good wards out and you control the whole pace of the game from that side of the map janice i think janice even after the buffs to his ultimate is uh super average and most players playing him are terrible below average but i'll pretend you know how to play him jingwei very good hunter because of safety so if you are somebody playing for the late game which should be every hunter jingwei is going to be a very consistent pick for you uh, she doesn't have a lot of bad matchups and she should never die to any ganks, which makes her really, really good in ranked. Crit is still valuable. Even after the nerfs, crit's still going to be valuable. Once they buff the auto attack items, maybe Jingwei and crit will fall off. Jormungandr, terrible. Trash. You, there's nowhere you play him where he's good. Sorry. <clears throat> Kali's falling off because auto attack items are not that good. So she's going to go down to the B tier. Even for ranked, I know people like playing her. You can't build her crit. So if you don't know how crit works, crit multiplies your auto attacks damage if it procs, right? Well, on Kali, your auto attack hit chain is 0.5.5. Is it it's a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.75 or something? Or is it 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.75? Either way, your autos are doing half damage, half damage, half damage, and then, you know, whatever. They're not doing high damage. Um, so... Each of those crits is critting for way less than someone who has a 1-1-1-1, one, 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 right? You're attacking very fast, but you're not attacking for a lot. So it's just way more valuable to go auto attack builds like Kins. X. It's 0 .5, 0 0.5, 0.51. Okay. So realistically on Kali, a lot of time you'll blink auto, three auto. Um, so you're, you're auto attack canceling, which is resetting that chain. So you're 0 .5, 0 0.5, and then you'll 0 .5, 0 0.5 again. Not worth it right now. So they change the items. Once they buff Kins and stuff, which is probably going to happen again, you'll see some more Kali. Capri, I think, is a good pick right now, as long as you have frontline in the other roles. King Arthur, I'd say, is an extremely average pick after the nerfs to Bluestone. Kikulkin, an average mid, because he can't really do much outside of ult. And if his ult misses, he becomes way less valuable in teamfights. I do like his three for jungle fighting. But at the same time, there's way better gods for jungle fighting, like Agni, uh, like Baba Yaga. There's just way more out there. Kuma Carter, I'd say, is underperforming as a support. His setup isn't enough and his damage is lacking. Kuzimbo doesn't have any role he really fits into right now. Lancelot, I'd say, is average. I'd say he's good. A little bit above average. His damage is high. Late game, he dies very quickly, though, and that's his downfall. Loki, I like Loki for ranked. If you're good with Loki, you should be able to kind of run around and do whatever you want, which becomes valuable. But... 
he's not going to be win condition because if the other team is grouping, you're going to struggle to play the way you want to play. Marticarus, he's getting nerfed in the patch. I still think he's the best hunter, one of the best gods in the game. Ability, Marticarus works. Auto attack, Marticarus works. He works in the mid lane. He works in the uh, ADC role. Play him wherever you want, however you want. Maui, I think Maui is an insane support still. No matter what they do to him, his ultimate wins matches. That's it. His ultimate is literally, that's it. You you could play everything super average in his kit and then land big ults, which I had a guy do yesterday. His big ult won us match. He did play terrible the whole game and then hit three massive four-man ults, instantly wins you the game. Now you could say, oh, well, a lot of other gods could hit four-man ults. Maui's ult potential is higher than everybody else's. In the current jungle map, standing near each other is extremely common, especially when you feel safe. It's very hard to react to Maui ult, even to get your beads off in time for a lot of these players. So that's going to make, that just puts him up there even higher. Medusa underperforming. Um, I have to put her down here to move her down. She's going into C tier. No build is good for her right now. And her movement sucks because of her dash being able to be interrupted and blocked. Mercury is still the best jungler in the game. I think even with the crit changes, he's still going to be the best because he's one of the best farming. For me, jungling right now, Mercury and Baka are very close. Baka's a little bit more difficult to consistently get away with, but not by a lot. And if people aren't aware, you kind of run through teams easier. Uh, Mercury's just insane for farming, and his early and mid game is way better than Baka, while they have very similar late games. Merlin. I think Merlin's S tier for me. Very easy to dive him. That's the only reason he's not S S tier, but he's insane right now. The damage he's outputting is insane. Morgan LeFay. I think Morgan LeFay for ranked. He's better than Merlin. People are like, well, she doesn't have mobility. Her kit dump onto a warrior, onto an assassin, onto anyone diving her is ridiculous, and you're not out damaging it. She does so much more damage on top of herself than most of these other gods are able to do. So she has over the you know over wall damage like you have on Agni that has CC built into it. On top of having a crazy range CC immune ult, she is self healing and she is more damage on top of herself with self heal than the other mages. So I'm putting her in SS tier. You could argue S tier and I wouldn't argue with it. I think she's just better. She wins so many of these matchups. She makes the game very hard to play for a lot of these mages in the mid lane. So I like her a lot. The biggest thing you can do to make sure you succeed on her is just ward. So you're never getting ganked without knowing it's coming. Mulan, extremely underperforming right now. She's not doing anything. I haven't seen her be good. Like, I haven't seen her be decent this whole year. And even last year when people were trying to make her work, I don't think she was good. Naja, I think Naja is one of the better junglers right now that isn't good based on farming and crit. Uh, yes, Naja has crit, and yes, you do build crit, but it's not just the crit that makes her OP. It's her overall damage in her kit, the three spam, the lower cooldown. If you go Sekmets, you pretty much have no cooldown on your three. And then the fact that your ultimate with a Deathbringer will one-shot a mage in the late game. Uh, if you get to the point where you have Red Pot, and I don't know if you need, need Fire. I don't think you do. I think if you have Red Pot, you can one-shot a mage. If you have Fire 3k pot, you two-shot the mages. Uh, it's crazy. Neath, slightly underperforming, very average hunter, uh, still relevant with the ultimate. Nemesis, one of the better junglers right now. Play her crit. Play her when Mercury and Baka are banned, or even if Baka's in the game. Nem is a good matchup into those two. But the point is you play Nem crit auto attack in the same way you do Mercury and Baka. You play Golden Blade farm, and then you have really strong late game team fights because your ultimate and auto attacks will insta kill somebody. Nike, underperforming in the role. Kit sucks. It's just not enough CC and not enough in the kit. It's just a survivability kit, which isn't what you want out of your warrior right now. Nox. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to put Nox in S tier as a support. No other role. No other role. Good Nox support players are amazing. Now, there are so few of them and so few of you out there. All right. I can't tell you enough. Practice Hell's combos. You have to be able to combo to get real value out of Nox. And you also have to learn at some points you don't need to combo. You can just land the one. But your combos, being able to 2-1 combo, is very, very much a must. If you aren't hitting, if you're 2-1-ing and you're missing every other one, stop playing Nox. You need to be hitting these very consistently. All right? I will not put her in SS tier because I think your average player playing Nox is not that good i'd rather have a very average hell support than a very average nox support all right new uh 
average mid pick. You pretty much play for the ultimate. Odin right now, a lot more value than before because of healing being in the game and because of so many gods being unable to get out of Odin ult. If you go max cooldown Odin and you ult somebody and you get their shell, which allows them to get out, that shell is on a much longer cooldown than your ultimate. You can usually get another, you're easily getting another ult off. Sometimes you can get a third ult off on them. So if you're trying to do that, bait out the shell and then wait for your ult to come back up, re-engage. He's performing great against those gods. In lane, he's okay. He's not insane. He doesn't have a bad laning phase. That's the big thing. Oleron underperforming after the gut to auto attack mages. Even with crit being good, he can't build crit items. So he's not that good. Osiris, another auto attack warrior, not performing well. Pele, solid jungler. Her issue is once she's in, she's in. And it's hard to play around that. In a rank setting, you don't have communication. You don't have target calling. And she can struggle because of the full engage factor of the god. Persephone, still getting shit on. Uh, wouldn't play Persephone. I like Poseidon in mid right now. I, in fact, I love Poseidon in mid right now. Most people don't build the right actives in general, let alone against Poseidon. Most people don't use their actives correctly against Poseidon. And most people can't keep up with Poseidon's rotations. There are not a lot of good mages that can keep up in general. And if you're a good player, you get that extra jump on all those people that don't know how to rotate. Raw, I'd say Raw is extremely average. It's dive central on Raw. He can't go anywhere. He can't do anything. He can't keep himself alive. J. Tedder, you're not a good player. So Raw is going to be down there. Raijin. I thought Raijin was going to have a better year this year, but I'm I'm not thinking that's going to happen. I'm going to put Raijin down here in the B tier. Uh, that just is what it is. Rama. I'm going to bump Rama down. I still think Rama is very good. I think if you have a dive comp, he's S tier. I think if you don't have a dive comp because of your your lower mobility and your average positioning, Rama falls down a little bit for me, especially with crit being nerfed a little bit more. Keep Raijin in the gutter? Nah. Uh, rat for me. I'm gonna, I don't know if he had him B tier before. I'm going to put him in A tier. I like crit rat for ranked because of the snowball potential right now. Not enough to bump him up. Uh, ability rat still hits very hard, but is he one of the best junglers in the game? Not even close. Not anywhere close. Ravana. I think Ravana with Sekhmet is an insanely strong, possibly the most underrated assassin in Smite. I don't see Ravana bit played much at all. When I do, he runs the lobby. And if you go Sekhmet, he's broken. But not actually broken compared to the game. Just, just very strong because of how underrated he is. Scylla. I'm putting Scylla in S tier. Scylla's one-shotting with a 1-2 combo. No poly. Um, no alt. Just a one-two combo will one-shot a hunter, a mage, and assassin. How is that not good? Especially in rank. She can do damage over the walls. She's probably one of the safer mages in the game with the really long dash out of her three and then the CC immunity and movement from her ultimate. So it's nuts. I remember when Raijin was good and he was super unfun to play. He was 100% a ban for a very long time. But if they could find a way to balance Raijin, it'd be cool to see him come back. Uh, Sir Cat got buffed. I'm putting her in A+. They gave her crit from her ult. Her ult cannot crit, but when you level up the ult, you're, you get crit percentage. At max rank ult, you get 30% crit. That basically makes it so you don't have to build Rage. You could just go Deathbringer and then go with defensive item like Magi's Blessing. Or even two defensive items if you already put Magi's in that build. And that will make it so you aren't just a... Uh, an insta-kill target, right? When you're full damage, Sir Cat, if the other team is grouped, you die very quickly. She still struggles because of what I'm talking about. Her late game, when people are grouped, is very, very, very difficult to play. You have to position properly. You have to target properly. You have to go in at the right time. Hunters will three-shot you. So if you want a mage and the hunter's around, the hunter will kill you while you're going on the mage. Flip side, you go on the hunter. The mage will kill you while you're going on the hunter. That's the struggle of Sirket and why they're struggling to balance her. But she is better than she was, obviously. Set, I think Set's pretty good right now. People aren't building anti-heal as much as you would think, despite healing being so strong. Uh, so Set actually gets away with a lot more than he should. Shiva, I'd put down here as a pretty good pick. I don't think he's average. I think he's definitely better than a lot of these, you know, these average, definitely better than Chalk. He's a very beginner-friendly god. Super easy to hit ability. So if you're a newer player... Shiva's going to be a go-to warrior for you. I think his team fight is definitely undervalued, under underrated. Um, his CC is not stuff you're going to beat. So he becomes very frustrating to play against when you're a damage dealer. 
Scotty. Scotty sucks. Just got done playing Scotty like five games in a row because of the Nuzlocke. Scotty sucks. C tier. No mobility. No CC immunity. The dog sucks at killing creeps uh, outside of lane. Lane's fine. But in terms of jungle farming, doesn't get help from the dog because of the way the creeps interact. Scotty's not good. Sobek. I'd say Sobek is... I'd say Sobek's a pretty good pick right now. Uh, Anti-heal built into the kit. Pretty good setup in CC. Biggest issue is in the late game team fights when you pluck, you could die. That's kind of the same with most Guardians, though. Bacchus flops in, he could die. Um, so, but I like Sobek. I, I enjoy a good Sobek player. Soul underperforming because of the gutting to auto attack mages. I don't think Hell is bad. I'd say she's teetering between A and B, but she's not outperforming other mages or hunters, so that's why she's B. Sun Wukong, the most overrated warrior possibly in Smite's history. Every bad Smite player will say new players should play Sun Wukong. No, you shouldn't. He's not good in the first place. His kit is hard to use properly. Going full damage is not going to work for you. Going full tank is not going to work for you. Don't play Wukong right now. For the love of everything in your life. Don't. Surter, underperforming from where I thought. I'd say he's a, for ranked, he's a pretty good pick because he'll win you early in mid game. Pretty much automatically if you know what you're doing. So he's definitely better than your Chalks, better than your Sun Wukongs. His late game falls off, though. That's what you need to watch out for. Suzano, very, very, very good assassin right now. Hyper CC assassin that can pretty much one combo somebody. If you can't auto attack cancel, don't play him. Sylvanas got buffed. Not seeing him come back too much. Uh, team fight's decent. Lane control is pretty much the same. The two change wasn't enough for him. I think he's good. I think he's good for rank because he wins you lane, but I don't think he's a top pick or something you should priority pick. Terra is performing pretty well right now. A good Terra is very annoying. The ultimate's still valuable. There's a lot of CC in her kit. Biggest downfall, she won't guarantee when you lane. Thanatos. I have not seen a lot of Thanatos play lately. I still think Thanatos is the number one snowball ranked assassin jungler in the game. If you want to hard carry from the early game, you want the early game to decide whether you win the game or not, Thanatos is the go-to. The Morrigan, performing decently. She gets pressure. Just need to make sure you're picking her when there's big ults in the game already. Thor, I put Thor up here to A+. He does a lot of damage right now. Ever since they added damage to his two, solid god. Thoth, I'd say that down in here in A. Very easy to dive, but his early mid is good because he can use the towers for protection. Tiamat, S tier. Impossible to kill, doing ridiculous damage. I hope the mage item nerfs change that, but I don't think they will. Tsukiyomi, this is probably one where your most average players would be mad or argue about. Tsukiyomi's got issues, man. He's got issues. If he has any counter matchups in the game, he's going to struggle. It's going to be very hard to play. His ultimate is not doing enough damage ever since they nerfed it way back when. And most people will go blink beats. If you go Aegis, it's definitely a more sustainable god. You won't insta-die every time you ultimate. But it's still Tsukiyomi. His 2 is getting interrupted a lot. He's going to be face-checked by good junglers. And he's going to be out CC'd by good players in general. So I'm okay with putting him down here in A where he's a good pick. But no higher. No higher. Tier. Nerfed into the ground because they nerfed healing. Here's B tier. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Decent, pretty good god, but ability hunters aren't popping right now. Vamana, SS tier. This is a big change. Crit Vamana with two defense items in the jungle, broken. Crit Vamana with like three defense items out of the solo lane, broken. Play Vamana if you want to press four and slam down on some fucking idiots, all right? Uh, it will win you a lot of games right now. I think even after the crit nerfs, it'll still win you a lot of games. Uller should not be played in the jungle. Vulcan, just not safe enough to be a high pick right now in the mid lane. It's too easy to kill. A lot of damage, though. Shibalake still underperforming from where he was. I'll put him in A tier because I think use of his ult properly still makes him pretty good, but not insane. Shing Ten, I'd say, is just another safe support, same as he's been for a while. Yamoja. <sighs> this is like a Nox type of thing for me here. I'm putting her in the S tier. God tier Yamoja players, the best Yamoja players in the game, win you the match. If you're a good player. So like if I you know if I have a Yamoja, a good Yamoja on my team, I'm auto winning. The movement, the ultimate, and the setup from Yamoja is unmatched. But even your good players, not just your average, your good players aren't even playing Yamoja properly. So you need to put a lot of practice into her before taking her in ranked. 
Ymir, underperforming, too easy to kill. Supports aren't tanky enough. His CC is too easy to deal with. And his walls and lack of mobility, uh, well, his walls aren't enough for him and his lack of mobility makes him struggle. Yu Wong, probably the safest good mage right now. Um, when you look at the other mages that should be played in mid, Morgan Le Fay, not a lot of mobility. She's still insane. Agni's mobility is limited. Baba Yaga's mobility is limited. Hebo, no mobility. Merlin's abil uh, mobility, limited. These gods can all be dove. Yuan doesn't get dove very easily. Zeus, I'll throw him in A tier because his damage is still nuts, but he's very easy to kill. And John Kui has been underperforming this whole year, so I'm going to put him in as a average pick. He, you know, there's a while there where I thought he'd be higher up, but we aren't there yet. And there's your tier list. Any questions? Has Zawana ever been SS before? Um, I want to say he has, but I don't remember when or why. Might have been when they changed his ult the first time. It might have been overtuned, or maybe it was before that. I don't remember. There's been, like, over the course of the years, there have been many metas where he comes in and pops off. You'd move up, watch the A+. Plus. Mm. I don't think so, man. I really don't. The items being nerfed are pretty big for Opwash, and he's already kind of underperforming. I do think he's obviously good into healers, but if there's no healing in the game, his value drops significantly, and even when there are healers, it's not that insane. I, I like Opwash. It's just in current smite, he doesn't do what... I feel like he's almost there. Like, one buff and good players just make him shit stop everybody. Is a ranked tier list, yes. All my tier lists are ranked. As SPL tier lists are irrelevant to non-SPL players, and casual tier lists resemble ranked tier lists. Would I say this is a healthy state for the game? Um. Yeah, I mean, the gods aren't the problem in Smite right now. It's the fact that crit and mage damage are so high. That's the problem. And they're nerfing that tomorrow, so maybe it won't be a problem anymore. I don't think any of the gods are issues. I mean, most of the gods are fairly entertaining to watch and to play. There's some warriors who are kind of snooze, but honestly, out of all the warriors, Guan has a, an interesting kit. Maybe not one to play against, but he's got a heal. He's got a two. He's got a three. He's got an ult. So he's always doing something. Where a lot of other warriors, what they're doing is just not... like It's, it's instant. It's boring. Mali Malik, I've always wanted them to adjust base stats because I think Guardians and Warriors base stats are still too high. I'm talking about like their damage way too high. You'd move Sugiyomi down. I would too, based on like my own personal, like just not, not on experience, just based on my own personal tier list. But I think Sugiyomi can have good games. I just don't think Sugiyomi is good. And I think it's very easy for me to counterplay a Sugiyomi on pretty much every assassin. Uh, I think Lance is good, but I think he struggles late game because he dies so fast. So his damage is high. But if it's any type of hard CC in the game or you're focused, you are not going to have a good game where a lot of other assassins can be patient and get their damage off even when wanting like people want to focus on. Wukong be fixed. Honestly, if they... They can do two things. They can change his ult to be a better warrior tank ult. Or they can make it an assassin and speed up his ult and make it a better assassin ult. And add power, like add more scaling to his abilities if they made him an assassin. Obviously. Rat is crazy. Thor is immensely better than Rat. Thor is so good right now. It's insane. You don't fall. So Thor's issue for a long time was that he had no late game. He just became CC bot for the most part. You have consistent damage the whole game now. On top of items, your two does damage. You've gained more damage than just item damage. Thor is very, very good and insanely consistent. Rat, on the other hand, is not insanely good or insanely consistent. You're talking about a knockup ult that is very telegraphed from Rat versus a stun ult from Thor, which can be telegraphed, but good Thors aren't going to open the fight with an ultimate, and they're not going to ult from somewhere you can see. Rat, you're going to see him coming because he has to be near you to land him. What up, Jab? There's so much knockup immunity in the game that you can just go, use anything to not get railed by Rat. What's up, Jab? Thank you for the Prime sub. Why is Nox up so high? Support. Support Nox is insane right now. Every average player can press 2 and then press 1 on Thor if they've played him more than once. So to say people can't combo Thor, 
it's you're playing with people that are literally playing with their feet or they've never played Thor before. What if Erlang and Lance switch roles? That would make sense. They'd have to buff Erlang a lot uh, and make Lance a little bit tankier, but it would make sense. 